Uh, for those of you just joining us now, we are only moments away from the, the Chris Chavez and Friends Influencer Mile. Um, will be very interesting to see between Gladwell and Chavez who comes out on top. We are here at Icon Stadium. The weather has dropped a couple degrees. The flagpoles are absolutely motionless and, and we're hopefully in store for some real fast times later this evening yeah. during our primetime event. You know, I think personally my new take is no longer if I want Chris or Malcolm. I want the field. Well, you know, like talk about disrespect. So I should say, so so uh, my friend and teammate Izzy Seidel, uh, who viewers may recognize her last name as the younger sister of one Molly Seidel, she ran a uh, 440 road mile uh, a couple months ago now, and she's not crazy sharp, but she is uh, a very accomplished middle distance runner in her own right, and she's in this race, so. Look out for her, and I would not be surprised to see uh, plenty of other folks in this race uh, throwing it down at the front of the pack. Uh, Allison Lynch, a, a longtime 1,500-meter uh, uh, expert from Boston who runs and works for Whoop. You see it on the wrist. There it is. Oh, yeah. She's ready to roll. Repping. Our pacer, as we can see on our screen now, is Brian Schroy, who has flown in from Boulder, Colorado. There apparently is no one in New York who can run five-minute pace, so we had to bring in the heavy hitters. I, like, who paid for that ticket? I, I hope that didn't come out of our third microphone budget. That, that was why we didn't have a third microphone, is because we needed a, a pacer from Boulder. That's what uh, all of the city is... No, I shouldn't even joke about that. Uh, <laughs> we'll get in trouble. And that's uh, Kara Enright from... The uh, Sidious Mag Track Club rocking the Tracksmith kit here. We have, do we know what, what Gladwell's wearing for the race at this point? I don't see him on He's this track down there. He's a guy as well, if I can remember properly. But, you know, I think that... The word on the street is that Gladwell is planning on going out a little bit more conservatively. He's an athlete coming from the strength side of things. He's 57 years old, I believe, has a ton of mileage under his belt. Chris Chris was, like, running sprints on, on his high school team a, a couple of years ago. Chris, so, Chris has been very vocal about his intent to sit and kick, however, so I would not be surprised if we see him uh, stalking uh, Gladwell like a hawk. Yeah. The question is, would you rather, if I'm Chris, would I rather win the race within the race? Because obviously they're both going to lose. Um, or would you rather break five and lose? That's a great question. I think based on his sit and kick strategy, he, he is committed to winning over running fast. So that's what I would guess. But we will have to see as the race plays out how he plays it. It's a real... Uh, battle between David and Goliath, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. First, There's how first many, drop. <laughs> yeah, how many different uh, Malcolm Gladwell literary references can we uh, work into the broadcast? And we see Izzy Seidel on the broadcast there, ready to roll. I will click, quickly run through the entrance. We have Brian Troy pacing, Ryan Welsh competing unattached. Allison Lynch, hip three. Malcolm Gladwell, hip four. Chris Chavez, hip five. Joseph Park, hip six. Michael Cosatino, hip seven. Izzy Seidel, hip eight. Richard Issa, hip nine. Aaron Osgood, hip ten. Jess Movold, hip 11. And Kara Enright, hip 12, as they line up and get ready to roll. There appears to be a one-to-one -one ratio of photographers to competitors in this race. It wouldn't be a race in I'm telling New you, York City. If the Chris Chavez Influencer Mile is what I have decided this race is called. Whether he's mad at me about that after the fact, we'll find out. I think something that we have to give Chris some kudos on is the amount of like pressure he's put on himself for something that he won't be able to do. He's a very vocal guy, which I, I appreciate because I, as much as I love running my mouth on any sort of social media uh, platform and or podcast and or live broadcast, I, I tend to keep it pretty low key about my own running. 
And Chris's, uh, you know, very candid remarks about his training uh, in, in his podcast and in his other content uh, are, are, are probably what makes him a fan favorite coming into this race. I got to say, I don't know about Malcolm's socks. I'm, I'm out. I think for a mile, you don't need <laughs> Don't need long, socks. but you know when you're 57, you might need compression socks. That's the thing. Keeping those calves moving the way calves are supposed to move, I think, is always uh, appreciated. Now, uh, Malcolm had emailed me a few weeks ago some workouts that he had done, and he wanted my impression. And I said he would be just outside five minutes. Well, we're about to find out whether that prediction pays off, and they are off and ready to go. They have a trusty pacer out front in the t-shirt. And we're going to see how this goes. It seems like they've immediately settled into five-minute pace. They're not going to get too much time in the bank. The, the strategy, again, was to go out a little slow. About 20 seconds versus 109. So, uh, you know, okay. Yeah. Not and I think bad. we're already seeing Gladwell go straight to the back. Maybe he senses that they are uh, out a little hot. As they come through 209 up front in about 38, 39 seconds. So you had about a, a second and a half for that nine meters. So the rabbit is running five minute pace. Those behind him just a, a tad slower. And Lynch's personal best in the mile is in the low 450s, I believe. So this should be a comfortable pace for her if she is in peak shape. So we'll see these uh, the women up front are mixing it up in this mixed gender race, but they are among the most credentialed milers in the race, so oh, keep an eye on them. For sure, as Chris is spending a lot of time in lane two, he wanted to not just break five for a mile, he wanted to break five for a mile and like 30 meters. They are through 402 meters in about 74 high, so their pacer, Brian Schroy, is doing a flawless job. With the, the gigantic hustle clean t-shirt at the front, that's branding right there. Yeah, he's easy to keep an eye on, which is good. And you're seeing already a little separation. Chavez is hanging off this lead pack here, but go in the wrong direction as we get the leaders coming around to 600 meters. Malcolm is just sitting on Chris just a few meters back. He's able to see his every single move as they approach 600 meters in about 157, and they're slow. You know what this reminds me of is a... 1500 at the end of a decathlon where the most interesting race isn't always who wins yes that's true this is a race within a race but you don't blink because it'll be over soon that's for sure and as we are coming up on 700 we have a tight pack of three women and two men now a race that was basically built specifically for Chris and Malcolm, they are in no man's land right now. They're forced to do all the work by themselves. As Brian up front just came through in 2.30, doing exactly what he was supposed to do, but Chris is coming through with two laps to go in 2.38. Yeah, so that's a sign that, that probably five minutes is out of the cards, but I bet we're going to see some fireworks over the last lap regardless. Gladwell got a little tripped up going around that turn there, but he is a man on a mission. He's got his eyes on Chavez, and he's not going anywhere. The question is, are they going to start winding it up, or are they just going to let everyone go away from them and just focus on each other? It's, it I, seems that they only care about beating the other one. I think that's that much is clear as we are seeing some lead changes up at the front of this race that are not on, even on screen, but with 600 meters to go, it looks like Izzy Seidel is slotted in behind somebody who I can't see from here. The writers come through 1,009 meters in about 318 as it is a battle between Sports Illustrated and The New Yorker, and publishing podcasts Chavez and publishing is other podcasts. digging deep right now as we can see them coming around. He looks like he's in pain, Kyle. I, I have to say it. Honestly, I can't imagine that he slept a wink the last couple nights thinking about this. And coming up to the bell, Izzy Seidel takes the lead, looking very comfortable and smooth. There's someone who has a chance of breaking five minutes in the mile. Izzy is a marketing associate for Tracksmith, so that's why she gets the fancy OTQ kit. With 400 meters to go, Chris and Malcolm come through in four flat. So we're going to need to see a sub-60 here. I think we're not going to see one, but I'm interested to see what we will see because although Chris committed to sitting and kicking, he has been in the lead this whole time. They're spending a lot of time looking at each other and not necessarily at the clock. And Gladwell moves in front of Chavez with 300 to go. 
Izzy Seidel has left the field in her dust as she comes around with almost 180 to go. As Chris looks down at, I think, his whoop to see how much <laughs> is left in the race. 250 meters to go, and he's starting to look a little bit too much at his feet as Malcolm is pulling away. Gladwell has opened up a gap on Chavez. And as Izzy Seidel comes down the home stretch looking very calm and collected, the clock is at 446. And Jeez. she's going to break the tape with daylight to spare today. 454, cross the finish line, and the big race that everyone's focused on. We've got Gladwell finishing strong, 100 to go, followed by Kara Enright, and Chavez nowhere to be seen as age defeats beauty. Chris really put himself out there. He put a lot of pressure on himself, but Malcolm is the one to take it in 515. And Chavez coming down the finish line to the adoring crowd. He's going to have to come up here straight to the booth and start announcing and hopefully well, he's got an interview. An answer for himself <laughs> as well. But no, this was this was a tough one for Chris tonight. Uh, you know, but it's just a season opener. That's true. This could, there could be a rematch with it. I don't know if we have, you know, enough photographers in the state for a rematch, but we're going to cut shortly to uh, Ali on the run down there uh, with the finishers. But here got they you. are. Izzy, congratulations. Thank How you. do you feel? I actually feel very good. That uh, was not as bad as I thought it would be, so the legs are feeling good. Good. When you showed up here, you walked in. I said, do you need anything? You, need, you said, I need some speed. Looks like yeah. you got it. I have not done any track workouts in a very long time, so we did this on a whim. Chris was like, you want to come run a mile in New York? And I said, yes. Is it Without, true? Yeah, training. Is it true that Chris told you to go easy on him and to hold the pace back and he not go out too really hot? He actually really boosted my confidence a lot. He did kept telling me I was going to dust him. So I would true. like to thank Chris for giving me the confidence. Well, I would like to thank you for being here. This was amazing. So yeah. fun to watch. What is your favorite dessert? Let's just go there. Favorite dessert? Yeah. Hockey sticks, obviously. Sad I won't get them in Tokyo because I'm a little bitter. I'm not going, but it's fine. Yeah. So, so do you think that all of the pandemic rollerblading that you did helped yeah. and paid off today? I do think that helped. Uh, lots of cross training lately. Honestly, I would like to thank Cody Rigsby of the Peloton One app for the training that led me to this mile. I've been biking a lot, so but really playing as well. So, well, great to have you here. What's next? Ooh, uh, great question. I don't know. Beer. 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 Next. Love that plan. Yeah. Izzy, congratulations. Thank, thank you so you. much for being here. Have a great rest thank of your you. night. She represents the district track club. And before we get to our next race, we should say that the Exhibition Mile was brought to you by Hustle Clean. Hustle Clean provides unisex self-care products for high performers. They're a black-owned, mission-driven company, and they invite you to empower your pursuit of greatness by picking up your Hustle Clean gear at hustleclean.com and following Hustle Clean on social media. Trials of Miles viewers can use the code TRIALS10 to receive 10% off on all of their orders at hustleclean.com. And we are shortly before this race gets underway, hopefully going to cut down to Ali again with Gladwell and Chavez, the writers. Yeah, we've got them here. Guys, you had very different plans going into this. It's my understanding that you were going to sit and kick, and you were going for it. Walk us through what were your plans, and tell us about the actual execution of it all. Go ahead. I had no plan. I was going to hang on, see what I had left. I wasn't going to go out with the lead group. That was all I knew. I'm way too old. I just decided to like, tuck in and see if I could catch Chris. And he did. I went out way too hard. Uh, yeah, I mean, my plan was to try and stick to 76s the first couple laps. And, you know, at the bell, I was ahead of you, but not for very long. And so, yeah, from there, he had uh, an extra gear, and I did it. But uh, I would like to exercise my rematch clause at some point. All right, let's just go now. <laughs> let's just do it. You guys seem fresh. You seem ready to go. Yeah. Did you feel bad when you realized you were, like, leaving him in the dust a little bit? Did you feel any remorse? None. None. Never. I, as I've stated all along, I'm old enough to be his grandfather. I deserve every break I get. 
Yeah, so the guys were saying before the race that you had age on your side. I you've did. got youth in your favor. You've got experience on your side. It's safe to say experience paid off tonight? I think so. I think that's what we learned here today. Uh, I made an unwise choice to run a little faster uh, at the beginning, but... Uh, no, it just feels in general really good to be back out here and racing. Like, this is the first race I've done in, like, seven months, and your first race in a long time, right? Yeah. So, I don't know. Everything seems to be coming back, and right now it feels like a good time that racing's coming back and track is back. Track is back, and great to be here with you guys tonight. Uh, Malcolm, sir, Mr. Gladwell, I feel like I can't call you Malcolm yet. We just met. What's next? Sleep. <laughs> That's what's next. <laughs> All right. Well, congrats, guys. Thanks for doing this. Thanks for bringing the fun tonight. Thanks, Congratulations. Alex. And 